Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here, and in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, we are going to be checking out the many mysteries and secrets of the snowy areas of the map. So a lot of you guys wanted me to check out, you know, what was in the Grizzlies, what was in Amberino, in Coulter, and in that area, and there was so much going on here that it would be hard for me to do a deep dive into just one particular thing. So we're just going to be looking at a ton of snowy mysteries today, including one of the strangest things I think I've ever seen in Red Dead Redemption 2. So anyways, let's jump into this and let's get it started. Our journey today is going to begin on top of Mount Shan, where we can actually find the remains of some giant bones, like literally giant bones. So in this area, you can see the size of the giant bones, and there's also the remains of like a normal human with like a skull and bones, and you can see just how big it is, like three to four to five times bigger. So this is literally where a resting giant, I guess, died underneath this cliff. And Arthur will actually write in his journal that it looks like these are giant remains. And he says, found a massive skeleton, wonder how big the man was, or if he was a man at all. Now, I wonder if this is in any way connected to the Lonely Giants hideout that we covered in another video. The only problem with that is it's located on just about nearly the opposite side of the map. So that might be a stretch, and who knows for how long this individual has passed away. So those are the giant remains right there. Now, also on top of Mount Shan, we can also find a sundial. Now, the sundial is not a point of interest, and you can't interact with it in any way, but there's been a lot of speculation as to the mystery behind the reason this ancient time-telling device is on top of this mountain. And one of the more interesting and unique things is on a lot of the bigger rocks that surround the center spire are colored arrows, like in red, yellow, and orange. So I wonder if those colors have any significant meaning. Are they pointing to different towns, different directions? Do they represent something in-game that I might not be aware about? Uh, if you have any idea on how to solve any of the mysteries we're going to be talking about today, including this sundial one, uh, be sure to let us know in the comments down below. So those are the first two big mysteries on top of Mount Shan. Now we need to venture off to Mount Hagen. That's where we're going to find our next mystery. Now, Mount Hagen is probably most famously known for housing Micah's hideout, but it turns out that there is a lost settler on top of Mount Hagen as well. It almost looks like a conquistador, as you guys can see here. He's in some like ancient armor, and who knows how long he's been on top of this mountain. Uh, Arthur will actually write, found a frozen fellow from long time ago. And you can actually take this guy's helmet, which is kind of cool. It's called the Marion helmet, if you want. It has a massive set of bright red feathers sticking out of the top. And he, of course, is officially known as the Frozen Settler. How someone like this ended up on top of this mountain, I don't think we will ever know. I don't think he has eyes anymore either. But regardless, still a really cool find. And that is what you'll see on top of Mount Hagen. The next thing we're checking out is so strange. It's actually a cabin located behind Barrow Lagoon. Now, Barrow Lagoon is a frozen lake. I mean, it's like rock solid. You can walk on it. And there's this cabin sitting just to the north of the lake. And I've never been in here, and I wanted to check it out. Now, inside, it seems pretty barren, like there isn't a whole lot going on here. It just looks like it's been frozen over. As you guys can see, there's like a little stove, there's some beds, uh, there's a table. And at a first glance, I didn't think there was really anything all that exciting in here. And then I found a newspaper clipping. It's called Grave Newspaper Clipping. And it says this. Uh, it's from 1874. I don't know what herald it's from. It says, talented ice skater's career cut short in terrible accident. So that's kind of interesting. And on the table, you can actually see a pair of ice skates. So I really wanted to find who this ice skater was, but they clearly weren't in this frozen cabin. However, located just a short distance from the cabin looks to be a grave. But not just a normal grave, a grave that looks to have been completely dug up and defaced. So you guys can see there is a shovel, the coffin has been completely uprooted, and uh, on the tombstone itself, it says something interesting. It says, no ice in hell. So this is so creepy. And if you actually inspect the grave site, you'll find out that this is the defaced grave. 
Now, what's interesting is I think this is our ice skater that had the accident because the body that we can see on the inside only has one leg, or at least part of his leg has been either amputated or removed. So I'm assuming the accident caused him to lose his leg, thus ending his ice skating career because you can't really ice skate with one leg. So that would explain everything. And that happened in 1874, which was like 25, 23 years uh, before our story starts. So it happened a long time ago. Now, I tried to read what was on the tombstone. Maybe you guys can help me out. I think it says like Felix Haley or something like that. And it says a lot of like pleasant things on the actual gravestone itself. Uh, I think he was a war veteran, a father, hero to all. So it seems like this guy was a really, you know, pleasant individual that just had a very tragic accident. Okay, so upon doing a little bit more research and investigating, this is Felix Hawley, who can actually be found on one of the cigarette cards found in his cabin. And he was once a renowned ice skater. So that's kind of interesting that he is one of the most famous celebrities in the game. And that's actually revealed from one of the cigarette cards that you can find of him that shows him ice skating and whatnot. So I think the mystery is still open because I don't think it really explains why there's that defaced grave there. So what a strange and incredibly sad tale, whatever happened at this cabin. This ice skater here, Felix, had his career cut short and then I don't know who was the one who ended up digging him up. Maybe it was a rival in his ice skating career. We don't really know, but it is so strange. And again, I am going to need your guys' help in solving this mystery uh, because I don't really know what happened here. I think I have a general idea of, you know, the fact that he's an ice skater and had this big injury. But why was his cabin abandoned and why was he dug up in the defaced grave? Again, let me know your thoughts, opinions, and more on this in the comments down below. Now, we're certainly not done exploring mysteries in the snow. There are a ton more left to be found, including the remains of a giant mammoth. So I don't know if mammoths like walked this land. I would assume like the Grizzlies is like a really uh, northern part of the North America at this point in the mountains. So maybe there could have been a, a, you know, a big mammoth there, but you can actually find the remains and the bones of one. And Arthur will actually say, you know, was this a mammoth? Sort of questioning if that really is the case. Now, these mammoth bones are completely unrelated to the dinosaur bones that you can actually find for Deborah McGinnis. But it is interesting that we already have so many dinosaur bones in the map of Red Dead Redemption 2. And now there is a mammoth bone as well. Moving on, we're going to be exploring some interesting shacks up next. This first one on the surface level... I thought was like had nothing going on there. So you can see it's just like a tiny little shack. However, I noticed some footprints that were going from the door and those were definitely not mine because I didn't walk to the cabin from that direction. So after going inside, this cabin seems to be fairly normal. Like there isn't anything that screams, you know, there's a big murder mystery that went on here. Uh, it just seems like there was a normal person sleeping, living, eating out here. But there was something about that trail that was driving me nuts. And I wanted to see if I could find where it eventually went to. So if you actually use Eagle Eye, believe it or not, you can follow the trail and uh, it will actually lead you on a long journey where you can eventually find the person who I guess lived at that cabin. I don't know what he was doing, but here he is. He's sitting on the edge of this snowy cliff and he's got himself a carbine repeater as well. So I don't know what he was doing. Like I said, if he was on like alert or on like some watch duty, but it seems like he just froze out in the snow. And that was the guy who sort of journeyed from his cabin. So that's the second mysterious cabin that you can run across in the snow. We can actually find another one as well. This one is located a little bit further south. And uh, this one, instead of it being alive and looks like, you know, things are going well, it's completely burned to the ground. And the only thing inside is a drawer that you can open with a message on the inside that says you flourish before you die. Now that is actually a cheat code. So I guess the only thing that that cabin was useful for was ultimately finding out a uh, cheat code that you could potentially use. 
But anyways, that right there is five or six mysteries in the snow you might not have known about in Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm telling you, the snowy parts of the world has some crazy stuff going on here. I just kind of wish there was more life, but I guess that does make sense. Like when the temperatures only reach like five or six degrees, there's not going to be a lot of people living there. And I know what you guys are saying, you know, it gets that temperature, you know, in a lot of places of the world. Well, that's a little bit easier to live in when it's 2019, not when it's 1899 and you don't have things like, you know, heating and, you know, modern clothing to keep you warm. So I think that there's a lot of interesting secrets here. I wish there was more, but I think Rockstar did a pretty good job of filling this area with a lot of unique things to find. But like I said, if you feel like you can help us solve any of the mysteries we tackled in this video today, please be sure to let us know in the comments down below. We'd love to hear from you guys down there. Uh, if you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new, or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.